Well, again, happy Sabbath. Don't you just love Sabbath? Yeah. We don't have to worry about work. We don't have to worry about anything except visiting with our God. Isn't it great? All right. Uh, we have our first hymn. We're only going to have two today. So our first hymn, They'll Know We Are Christians by Our Love. That's an old hymn, but I still like it. So, shall we stand? Good morning. The scripture this morning is from James 1.22. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, we thank you today for bringing us here and for this beautiful Sabbath day. We thank you that we have the freedom together to worship you. Um, Lord, help us at, to be doers of the word and not hearers, so that we be, will be witnesses for those around us. We pray that you will guide our little church in our search for a pastor to lead us, and we pray for our nation and the leaders that that they will look to you for guidance. We ask that your spirit will be with us today and uh, be with Jay He's, as he leads our service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you know we are like coins? We are. Different date on our birth, like the coins are all different. I'd like Ronan and Grace and Aurora to come up here, and I want you to give one of these coins to everybody, just one. So here's a few for you. Here's some for you. There's some for you. Coins? Yeah, they are. Do you know what these coins are? Give one to everybody. Everybody can look at these coins. Check them out. I like collecting coins. If you have a 1885 on the back of the eagle at the very bottom, will be two C's. Those C's represent Carson City, Nevada, the mint there. Here, come and get a coin. You get one too. Okay, I get one and you get one. You keep one. Aren't these neat? These are called silver dollars. Like Christians, we could be solid silver dollars for God. How do we know what a Christian is on the inside? Like these coins. Can you see on the inside? No. Only God can do that. He looks on the inside. And he knows who we are. We're going to read, and oh, by the way, some of these coins don't say it, but some do, in God we trust. I'm going to read Matthew 25, 1 to 13. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likewise to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. We all know that means Jesus, waiting for Jesus. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no extra oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels and in their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they slept. Some of us are sleeping. 
At midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. Our lamps are gone out. I should say are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us. You go and buy to those that sell, and buy yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterwards, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open the door unto us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I don't know you. Pretty tough. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. This, this parable has always, I don't know, it just made me think. You know, I've asked people, what do you, th what do you think the oil represented? And I've, I've had somebody say, oh, they didn't study. They didn't study. Well, if they hadn't studied, they wouldn't have been there waiting for Jesus to come. So they must have studied. They had their lamps. They were burning. So it couldn't have been they weren't studying. I've heard some ministers say, oh, the oil represents the Holy Spirit. Huh. So I could go down to Walmart and buy the Holy Spirit. I don't think so. I don't think we can go to a store and buy the Holy Spirit. So it couldn't have been the Holy Spirit. It has to be something else. When you think about that story, these are ten young women. Doesn't say they got up and straightened their hair, straightened their dress up because Christ is coming. No, they're worried about their oil. What I think, and this is only my opinion, is they didn't have a relationship with God. When you have a relationship with him, you're already studying. You already have the Holy Spirit in you. And you're waiting wisely. Be wise. Well, the five of them brought extra. They knew it was going to be maybe a little late. We all sometimes run a little late. Well, we're still waiting for Jesus to come. We're waiting. And when you have that relationship, it makes a different person out of you. What does oil or our relationship with Jesus do? It keeps us going. We keep looking. We keep studying. We look for something that has the river Euphrates dried up. That's in Scripture. So we know it's going to be soon. We are waiting and looking and studying. What about today? What do we do with oil? Well, we use it for heating our homes, running our cars, a lot of things, plastic, medicine is made from oil. That's why I didn't think that the oil represented studying or the Holy Spirit. I think it's definitely our relationship with our God. We need to be ready every day. Just like the scripture said, he's going to come as a thief in the night. We don't know. And all of them were standing there ready. They had their lamps, but they fell asleep. 
We don't want to fall asleep. None of us. Matthew 7, 21 to 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, we've prophesied in thy name. We baptize people. We've cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. We have to be ready every day at night. He could come next week. We don't know. It could happen that fast. Even myself, I thought, well, I'm a pretty good Christian. You know, I've done some bad things here and there, but I haven't killed anybody, so I am pretty good. Well, <laughs> according to this one, I have to have a relationship with him. He doesn't know me. We have to know our Lord. We are all sinners. 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 to 11. But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when you say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that the day shouldn't overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not the night nor the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep. Notice he's bringing out that sleeping. We are not to sleep every day. You know, it says pray without ceasing. Every day of your day of whatever you're doing, pray about it. If you're driving your car to the store, if you're doing your housework, if you're working on a job, pray about it. And God will be with you. He promises that. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who drink are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate. I like that, the armor of God. Put on faith and love on the helmet of hope, of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we are awake or asleep, awake or in the ground, we'll still see him come. Won't that be great? We should live together with him. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another, as you also are doing. I'd like Roland and you guys to look at your coins. I got a bunch of them here. I collected these. I thought I was getting a fabulous deal. These are old coins, aren't they? Some of the dates, 1700. Here's one, 1880. 
How much are they worth, some of these coins? We don't know. It says on there a dollar. They're worth a dollar. The one I mentioned to you that has the double C's, 1885, Carson City, that coin is worth $4,000. Nice thing to collect, isn't it? But can I see on the inside of these? Are they solid silver? They're not. All these old coins I collected are fake. They're not real. They're not even worth a dollar. You guys get to keep them just to remember this sermon. They're worth nothing. Let's study, put on God's armor, and be ready for Jesus to come. Like I said, we may be in the ground, but we will see him. And I pray that each of you, when we get to heaven, will hug each other. Won't that be wonderful? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, help us not to be fake. Help us to be ready. Help us to have a relationship with you. And every day that we live, help us to do the things that we do to be to your honor and your glory. And I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great Sabbath.